What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I am Jay. This is Jay's Life Out Loud, a channel about nothing, but it's about something. Um, today, I just wanted to make a simple video, and I want you to understand that this is my opinion and my opinion only. So, while reflecting on the trip to Ghana, uh, my second time being on the continent of Africa, first time was in Tanzania. Only being in Ghana, Sebu, Ghana, for uh, seven days. I am no expert. Uh, I don't know everything that's going on over there. I'm still learning. Uh, I'm still wet behind the ear. Uh, I am a pup. When it comes to uh, Ghana, and I'm learning. So I can only give you my opinion. So with that said, I believe that uh, that area that I was in, the Cebu, Cape Coast area, uh, is a nice place for anyone to move to. Now I say it's a nice place for anyone to move to because you uh, you can make your own life for yourself. You can make the best out of it. Uh, you can start over. Um, you can be a new you, get out, meet people, socialize, you know, or if you're the type of person that you just want to be uh, alone, or you don't want to be bothered with nobody, you could be the same way. You could be out there and uh, never have anybody bother you the whole time you're there. You know, you may have somebody come back and ask if you need some work done. But other than that, you could be to yourself. I saw uh, one or two people that were living like that. So, I would say this, uh, this is my opinion, when making a decision about moving anywhere, you really have to, peop I hear people say, do your due diligence about finding out about the land, housing, etc., uh, etc., et and I believe that's true, but first it starts with you. I purchased my land sight unseen as far as like seeing it firsthand. Um, I was given a, a diagram, a land map of the plots and I wanted four plots right by each other and that's how I chose my land. Uh, Michael, who I purchased my land from or through, he went and showed me video of what I was looking at. what the uh, what I picked off the map uh, after that I decided uh, my spirit felt right with it uh, the, 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 my God given discernment felt right with it so I went ahead and purchased now I'm pretty sure there are plenty of people that have done this and there's nothing wrong with it at all and I can't say anything about it because I've done it but I would actually Actually, you can do it either way, but to be there on the ground and to be able to see uh, what type of land it is, uh, is it sloped, is it flat, uh, is it sloped on both sides, uh, is, are there any water pockets, um, what's, what's near it, is there a uh, mosque or temple that you will hear that siren or that this, the, uh, the preaching or uh, whatever else, you know, you need to ask these things. Also, there's nothing wrong with just purchasing land, okay? Don't get me wrong. Uh, nine times see and the value is gonna go up. But be mindful of where that plot is. One thing that you can do is you could have whoever you're buying your land from go to the land 
used uh, the Google map and get the pinpoint of where the land is. After they send you the, the, the pinpoint, you can then put that in your Google search. It's gonna be some letters, some numbers. You put that in your Google search and it'll show you where the land is. And you can pan out and get a look around you know, some of, these, some of these photos will be old and some of them are new. So you just have to, you know, you can pan out and look how far is this, you know, anything from there. Uh, am I out, out in the middle of uh, nowhere? And then ask that person that's selling you the land questions. How far is this? How far is the nearest town? How far is the nearest village? Uh, if I, what, Where is the main road at that I can get to? and I can get to the markets. Uh, Roadside, you know, uh, stands that sell fruit, bread, you know, whatever, whatever. Okay, where are the banks at? Because all of these things are gonna come into play. If you are um, uh, a busybody, you like to be out and, and party and do all that, a Cebu may not be for you. Uh, you may want to be in the center of everything and get closer to a cry or if not in a cry Which is going to you know cost you more uh, I'm seeing that now from being there and talking to different people lands are going for different prices in different areas uh, You can buy land that's eight minutes away from another uh, plot that you're looking at one plot can be 1,000. The next plot uh, uh, five minutes away could be 14, uh, 1,400. Uh, go eight minutes away, it's 2,000. You go another 10 minutes away, it's 2,500. So you just have to, uh, that's why I say sometimes it's best to be on the ground and move around and get to talking as many people as you, as you can. I would say talk to as many people as you can without telling all of your business. Me, sometimes I can get to talking and I'll tell my business, you know, not like uh, bragging, but I love to use my life as a uh, testimony or to share with people, to uh, have a, a open dialogue with people. But uh, go there, find out, you know, you link up with whoever you buying the land from and um excuse me you had them walk you around and you know you get to meeting people uh you see somebody another american you sit and you talk to them you ask them questions uh you ask the, the the questions that you need to know you know so what's going on here and this this and that and what do you feel about this ask those questions um and you don't always have to reveal your motive. You know why? You know if they answer the question, it's fine. If they don't, they don't. But I've, I, I got a lot more information being on the ground, uh, just talking to people, uh, finding out different things that I didn't know. I didn't know that the Asebu Pan African Village that uh, only uh, people of uh, African descent can buy land there. I didn't know that, and that just happened uh, in a conversation. So I'm saying these conversations, you need to talk to people. You you may hear something that, you know, one person tell you this, then you hear it from somebody else, and you say, oh, you can do it that way too? So like I say, I'm a pup in the game. I'm learning. I don't know everything. So me being there for seven days, I'm only sharing my experience. Um, Howard was sharing, sharing his experience. Uh, Raphael was... It, it, expressing his knowledge of being raised and born in Ghana. So uh, Michael gave me his, his, some of his knowledge, the questions that I asked. Um, if, if you decide you want to buy land outright before you see it, that's no issue because that's what I did. Um, but if you can go visit first, go see multiple, if that one person that's selling you land has multiple plots, go to different plots, look around, see what you like. Is one closer to the roadside? 
uh, it's one, you may want to be up on a hill so you can overlook, uh, the, you know, have a nice view, overlook the scenery or overlook a town or whatever the case may be. Uh, where my land is at is, is slightly hilly, but where Howard's land is at, Howard's land is, is, uh, on a slant, but it looks out over, uh, over the landscape. It looks out over, over hill, which is nice. And I'm pretty sure the breeze is going to be good there. But what I'm saying to you, and, and, and I like my land, believe me, I, I, I love it. But what I'm saying to you, it gives you the opportunity to look around. Because nine times of 10, this is what's gonna happen. If you buy your land before you see it, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you buy it before you see it, you're still gonna buy a ticket anyway, because you now you're gonna even you wanna get there even more to go see your land. Now, I would say sometimes it's wise to purchase because you you know the land the, the prices are going up but if you have time make that trip because either way you're gonna make it over there to see your land it's gonna start it's it's, it's gonna be on the back of your head like don't you want to see me when you coming you coming yet when you coming waiting on you so it's gonna be there so me personally uh i it would have been nice to go see first would I have would have would I have purchased the same plot? I believe so. I like the way the plot sits. I know where the road is at. Uh, I have some uh, cool neighbors. Uh, I know who gonna be next to me. Um, uh, Jenna, my neighbor, she's been keeping me updated with anything, any information she finds out. I mean, she's been dropping uh, gold nuggets on me any opportunity that she can so i look forward to starting to build when the time is right i'm not a rich man i don't have I, my, my pockets are not overflowing and i'm praying that they start overflowing i'm speaking they gonna start overflowing i'm gonna speak it into existence but just know once you purchase that land no matter how much you're spending if you're spending two thousand 5,000, 6,000, uh, 20,000, whatever it is. Just know that in between that, you also have to figure out what size house are you going to purchase? How big is that? I mean, are you going to uh, have built? How big is the house? Uh, the square footage, what are you going to have? Start asking questions about that first because it all fits into the scheme of things because you can buy some land and then find out that you can't afford to build on it. So now you're sitting on some land uh, that you feel good having, but you know I'm never going to be able to do anything with it because my bills are this and my bills are that. So does it make sense to own land that you know you will never be able to build on? But whoever you buy the land from, make sure that you ask the questions. Okay, so once I buy the land, what's the next step? They may say, okay, you need uh, your borehole, or you need to put your wall up, or you need to put markers up, or uh, you need to uh, come up with a building design, or I'll send you several pictures of buildings. You can figure out which one you want to go with, and I'll let you know the price, this, this, and that, or whatever. So you may, you may be able to get that person to say, okay, well, can you send me the houses first so I can figure out, I wanna know what my total budget is because your total budget is not gonna be just how much that land is. Your total budget is going to be the land plus the construction, plus the, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The labor plus materials, all those things are gonna add up. And if you're sitting around and this is what's on my mind now. If you're sitting around, let's say, uh, five years, 15 years, however long you 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 got your mind set on, steady prices are steady going up and up and up and up. You can, like Michael my, my was telling me, a person can call you in January 
and you give them a price on how much something is going to cost. They get ready to do it in December. They think and they about to pay January prices. But the dollar is fluctuating. The CD is fluctuating. So now things are changing. Oil prices, gas prices. Those things are going to change what the price is going to be. So think about this. Um, I got like eight more minutes before my lunch is up with. So another thing I want you to think about, like I say, I'm a pup in this. There's been people over there 20, 30 years, all their life, whatever, whatever the case may be. So I'm just a pup. I'm looking from my opinion and what I see. You have to real have to make a decision or know what type of mover are you going to be? What type of repat are you going to be? Are you going to be the person that's old enough, over 62, 67, that's getting Social Security that's coming in every month? You know, um, is that, uh, is that, you know, and then you want to take a uh, uh, exchange rate calculator and you want to find out if I'm getting 4000 a, a month in my uh, retirement benefits, how much is that in their money? You know, I did it the other day for my mother, but I can't remember. It was it was over like like 16000 something like that. It was up to way up there, maybe even higher. Mm -hmm. But you have to, if that's it, then you know you got that monthly income. Uh, coming in you want to make sure that you have everything set up so you have an address in the United States uh, that you can get your mail to or a P.O. box where the government does not know or the state does not know that you are no longer in the United States you do not want them to know where you are I say that because uh, I heard a story and it affected the person's benefits, knowing uh, the, the the government knowing that they were not within the in in the country, and they benefits uh, were they didn't get what they were supposed to do, what, what they were supposed to get because they weren't in the country. If they had stayed in the country, they would have got their full benefits. So be careful of that. Uh, another thing is, if you do not have monthly income disability. Uh, things like that um, you know you not born into a wealthy family where your family just got bread or you could be per a person that's got your savings you know you may have let's say I, I met a, a FedEx uh, driver that said he had over 700 something thousand in his 401k which, if you got a regular 401k, that's going to get taxed before you bring, before you take it out. Every time you you take it out, you're gonna to have to pay taxes on it. Uh, if you have a, a Roth IRA, that has already been taxed. So when you go to pull that out, you pulling out straight cash. Then you want to create a budget. Uh, do you have a lump sum saved up? I'm not talking about oh. oh the stories that you hear people moved over there with six thousand seven thousand dollars i'm talking about do you have a nest egg i'm talking about a nest egg that holds uh that's big enough to hold 20 birds you know that type of nest so do you have uh 70 150 200 000 put up to live off for the rest of your life if you don't plan on going to the you know back to wherever you you come from or do you plan on being a dual citizen and going back and forth from your country back to uh ghana or wherever it is you decide to uh purchase your land and rest your head or are you going to try to create a business before you move over there or after you move that will sustain you and your monthly bills bills uh, will you build your house while you're there or will you build your house while you're here and let it be done before you move 
so you not you don't have to pay anybody to stay with them you have to decide which type of repat you are going to be where where's your money coming from i'm i'm 49 now uh, i won't be 50 to march 11. i'm nowhere i'm not at the retirement mark i have what uh like 17 years or something like that before I get there what do I do are you like me that the only thing that you could do is create a business or save or uh, the good Lord above blesses you with some with some hefty money you have to think about these things how are you going to get by does it financially make sense to you now here you can be in America and your bills are high and you saying to yourself well shoot my bills high anyway so it wouldn't even matter oh it matters because you're here and you're making money you're here and uh the money is here you're here and you're making you know 19 20 30 dollars an hour but going over to um ghana you're you know unless you're you find that something that i don't know about this paying 20 30 you know dollars an hour you're gonna need income and unless you uh make that move and you start uh growing uh veggies and you start uh growing your watermelons and uh you you got uh goats and cows you know you can get your milk and whatever else you need or your meat from that you you, you got chickens and all that you really have to think how are you gonna uh, sustain yourself and understand another thing I had to understand that this that was a vacation that I went on it was half pit business half vacation so with that vacation that I took you have to understand that when you go full-time it's not gonna be a vacation it's not a vacation where you can go and say oh I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do this we're gonna go to the the castles and then we're gonna go over here to here and then we're gonna we're gonna go to a crime we're gonna eat over here and then we're gonna go back over here you blowing money and if you ain't rent if you're not renting no car you have to pay to get everywhere that you go i do when when i got when i took the when kwaku took me from a Cebu to uh uh get my ghana card i can't even think of the name of the place i went when he took me to get that guy to, to, to Cotty, I can't think of the name of it. If you, look, if you look at the previous video, I said the name of it. He drove me all the way out there. It was a nice long ride. On the way, he waited, we was waiting an hour for the bank to process my stuff. So all together, we was probably there for like an hour and 30 minutes, hour and 40 minutes. Then we had to drive all the way back. Takarati. That was where we went from uh, Sable to Takarati. So after that, he took me uh, grocery shopping. He took me to the cell phone place uh, to get my SIM card. Uh, he took me uh, to another place to get my minutes. So you really have to think about all of this. What type of uh, repat are you gonna be? Also, are you going to be the type of repat that only talks to repats? I say befriend everybody. Get to know as many people as you as you can. Hold on to the real ones. Uh, let them fake ones go by the side, by the wayside. And, um, you know, try to make the best of it. The more people that you know... And I'm not saying being friends with, but more people that you talk to and that are knowledgeable, the more information that you'll get uh, and the better off you'll be, you know. So, like I said, I'm a baby at this, uh, still wet behind the ears. I'm learning. You got to learn. But the, the best way to learn is to be in the midst of it. Uh... I, I could go on forever, but until you go and you actually see and you're there, you really will never know. Videos 
you can watch a million videos and it still never will prepare you for Africa and what's going on. So until I'm able to get up out of here and hit the motherland, I am stuck in the illusion. Just a different type of cotton field. How long do you want to be stuck in the illusion? Do you want to get out? Peace, 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 peace. I love y'all.